All right, we're moving on to section 12.6, and today we're doing systems of nonlinear equations. We've already looked at uh, two or three equations within a system, and all of the equations represented lines. Well, today it's going to be a system, but uh, it could be one line and then one other shape. Maybe it's a parabola. Maybe it's half a circle. Um, so we're going to still use substitution and elimination. We're also going to employ some graphing. So um, you definitely will want some graph paper, and it's provided for you in Moodle at the top in the general section. Uh, you'll probably just want to print that off, or maybe you've got some pre-printed graph paper of your own. But there will be quite a bit of graphing uh, in this assignment. So I've chosen some odd problems. Uh, you'll be doing the evens, and uh, here's how these work. So our instructions say to graph each equation of each system. All right, then we're going to use either substitution or elimination, and most of the time it will be substitution, to find the solution. Um, the solution will be where these, if there is a solution, I should say, it will be where these two graphs intersect. And obviously there are times when they don't. And if that's the case, then there is no solution. And in some cases, just by looking at the graph, we can't really tell. And we can't really guess. Uh, so we're going to use substitution or elimination to get an exact answer. So uh, let me show you how that works. So uh, let's take this top equation. It represents a parabola. And um, I know that it's the parent parabola that shifted one unit upward. All right. So if you wanted to do um, a table, I guess that would be okay. If you input 0, you get 1. If you input 1, you get output 2. If you input 2, you get output 5. And we have symmetry on top of the y-axis. So this would be the graph of that top equation, the quadratic equation. And now let's graph this line. And uh, we'll change to a different color. So uh, this has its y equals mx plus b. So it has a y-intercept of 1. And it has a slope of 1. All right. And I'm going to get my draw, line draw tool for you. If you have a straight edge, it would be great to use. So we can draw nice straight lines. Get a running start. And uh, that's the graph of the linear equation. OK. So again, the solution is where the two points of intersection are. And we can pretty much tell what that is just by looking at the graph. There's two of them. But we want to use another method, like substitution or elimination, to basically provide proof that we did graph correctly. So this is kind of evidence. It gives us some confidence that we've done the two graphs correctly. So don't skip this next step. Solve the system to find the points of intersection. So I'm going to use substitution, which says, and for example, if this bottom equation, it says y is x plus 1, well, that means I can replace y in the top equation with x plus 1. And I will solve for x. All right, it's going to be a quadratic equation. And we always want to make those equal to 0 so that we could hopefully factor but if factoring is not possible, we'll use the quadratic formula, or we can complete the square. So uh, this is going to be x squared minus x. And you notice the 1s will cancel. Uh, I can do some factoring here, factoring in a GCF. And my two x coordinates, there's two different numbers that would make this equation equal to 0. Uh, the number 0, and then also the number 1. OK, well, the solution to systems, remember, is I've got to find x and y. All right, so I've got two x's. It's like I've got two different ordered pairs. And in each ordered pair, the x coordinate's going to be 0. Now let's find the y coordinates. So just go to either one of these and replace x with 0, and you'll get 
your y. So 0 plus 1. So one of my ordered pairs, and that matches my graph, so I'm feeling pretty good. I should have a solution of 0, 1. And now you can go to that same equation if you like, or you can go up to the other one. doesn't really matter. Let x be 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And that matches. We crossed, they, they cross each other at those two points. So I've got two solutions. So basically you're providing a graph example and then you're proving with a, an algebraic method, substitution or elimination. All right, so uh, let's try this one. Um, this square root function, your number eight looks a lot like this. Uh, let's just think of some easy inputs uh, that will give us nice outputs to graph. Uh, for example, zero, if I let x be zero, then I get 36 minus zero and the square root of that. So the square root of 36 is six. So zero, six, right there. Okay, and then let's just think about uh, input six. 6 squared is 36, 36 minus 36 is 0, the square root of 0 is 0, 4, 5, 6, and then that's also true if we input negative 6, because negative 6 squared is 36, we get the same result. So basically, um, this top equation represents half a circle, and I'm going to try to try to draw that. It's kind of like the top part of a circle. Pretty close. Okay, now let's do the bottom half, and that's linear because x is to the first power. It's got a y-intercept of 8 and a slope of negative 1. All right. So as you can see, uh, since I did a rough sketch, I didn't make my blue shape quite as tall as I needed to. They really looks like they're going to intersect, but I can't really tell where. And that's where the algebraic part of this solution is going to really come in handy. It's going to give me some tips on how I really should have drawn this blue half circle. And it will tell me exactly where they do if they cross each other where. All right, so let's do substitution again. So since y is 8 minus x, I can just come up here and replace y with 8 minus x. And I can square both sides to get rid of the radical. So remember, uh, we've talked about this in the past, but if I'm going to square a binomial, <clears throat> you can do mental math. Just square the first of these two terms. Multiply these two terms together, and then double that. Okay, so if I just multiplied them together, that would be negative 8x. And then when I double that, that's negative 16x. And then square the first, or square the last term. And then squaring the right side removes the radical. All right, so uh, once again, it looks like we're going to have a quadratic. And so uh, let's set it up so that it equals 0. And I'm going to add x squared to both sides. I'm going to, of course, I've got the minus 16x. And I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides. And uh, let's see if we can do some factoring. I know there's a GCF. And uh, unfortunately, I can't factor any more because uh, there aren't any factors of 14 that add up to negative 8. So let's, let's work on, let's use the quadratic formula for just this quadratic factor. So opposite of b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times 1 times 14. 4 times 14 should be... 56, and all of this goes over 2 times 1. 
Okay, so um, don't worry about simplifying in radical form. We're just going to come up with a decimal answer. Uh, looks like they are going to cross. If if this had come up to be an imaginary res result here, then I know that they don't cross. But since this isn't imaginary, they have to cross. And this will tell us uh, actually two different places where they're going to cross each other. So in my calculator, all you really have to do here, 64 minus 56 is 8. Uh, let's find out what these two results are. So go to your calculator, do 8 plus the square root of 8. and then divide that by 2. And hopefully you got 5.4. So once again, we're going to be dealing with two different ordered pairs, and we're finding the x-coordinates right now. One of those ordered pairs should have an x-coordinate of 5.4. And now do 8 minus the square root of 8. And divide that by 2. And that's 2.6. Okay, so let's just take a look and see if that looks reasonable. Um, about five and a half. There's about five and a half. Uh, boy, my blue um, half circle is way off. I should be hitting one, two, three, four, five and a half. It should be coming up this way. And then uh, 2.6, about 2.5, I should be hitting right there. So this gives me some good information that uh, I really um, shortened my blue graph quite a bit. All right, so now all we have to do is uh, go to either one of these and replace the variable x with these numbers. So let's do 8 minus 5.4. 2.6, and then 8 minus 2.6, 5.4. All right. So, and it's okay. You don't have to go back and reconstruct this. I actually think it's kind of good that you make a connection between the graph and the actual solution. Um, I think this is a good exercise in what it means to actually solve a system. And uh, so we're done basically with number seven. Show me the graph of these and then show me the exact answers algebraically. All right, so uh, let's try number nine. Here's the square root parent. So uh, let's just go ahead and sketch that. Hopefully you remember what that looks like. It's this curved ray, uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. And it shoots off toward positive infinity. And then we have another linear equation that has a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of negative 1. And uh, we'll change the color for this one. OK, now let's see. Uh, we, we get a pretty good picture of what the solution is. But once again, let's find it algebraically. So uh, you can do substitution again. and. Uh, Either way, it really doesn't matter. You could say the square root of x replaces y down here, or 2 minus x replaces y up here. doesn't matter which way you go. I'm going to raise both sides to the second power. So much like the previous problem, let's square the first term. First times second times 2, square the last term. And then this just becomes x. <clears throat> Uh, set it up as a quadratic equation that equals 0. So I subtracted x from both sides. Um, we are going to be able to factor, in this case, the factors of positive 4 that add up to negative 5. All right, so I got x equals 4, positive 4 and x equals positive 1. 
And so this is kind of interesting because maybe at this point you're thinking, but it looks like we only cross at one place, but I actually got two X answers. And you're thinking, right. And so uh, if we if we do go ahead and replace the X's accordingly, uh, here, if I let X be 4, let's just go up to the top, and you do the square root of 4, you get positive 2. But if you try that same thing in the bottom and you let X be 4, you get negative 2. Okay, so here's the deal. To be a solution to a system, whatever you get for X has to make both of these true. So there's two things going on here that should be sounding alarms. First of all, the graph. Um, we think we did the graph correctly, but um, when we solved algebraically, we got two answers. The graph only says one. Okay, so we should investigate. And sure enough, um, X being four, it's, it's okay for the first one. I get uh, the square root of four is two, but when I plug it in for the bottom, I get negative two. So since I didn't get the same result for both cases, I'm tossing this one out, okay? Another thing to keep in mind is <clears throat> there is no way, you know, there is no way to uh, have a negative Y with this red graph because it's going forever and ever toward positive infinity on the Y axis. Okay, so the only good solution, the one that does work for both, is when X is 1. So if I let X be 1, the square root of 1 is 1. And if I let X be 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. So this is a, a good drill and practice for what does it truly mean to be a solution of a system? Well, a, a true solution not only makes one equation true, but it will make both true. And so now we have an, an algebraic solution that matches our graph solution. Okay. All right. Let's try this one. Um, hopefully uh, you remember uh, this top equation represents a circle. It's centered at the origin, and it's got a radius of 2. All right, so let's just go ahead and sketch that one first. I know it's centered at the origin because we're not adding or subtracting anything to x or y. <clears throat> and remember, the, the circle equation says x squared plus r squared, or x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So if you want the radius, you've got to do the square root of that number. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, and I'm going to try my best to do a neat circle around these points. Eh, not too bad. Okay, so for the other one, uh, we'll change colors and we'll go to blue. Um, this one is, uh, we're going to have to complete the square on X. So a little review of what we did back in the past. So remember, when we complete the square, it's the square root of X squared bring down the sign, and then we always divide by 2. And we don't have to complete the square on y. And then to make this balance, if we did multiply this all out, expand it, it would be x squared plus 2x plus 1. So to balance out the equation, I need to add 1 to the right side as well. Okay, so this is also going to be a circle, but its center is negative 1, 0, and it's got a radius of 1. All right, so here's negative 1, 0, and then radius of 1 all the way around. Okay, not too bad. All right, so it looks like we have one point of intersection, but let's go ahead and use an algebraic method and just kind of give some confidence to our graph. Uh, one thing you can do about these circles, if you notice, uh, this is substitution as well. Uh, X squared plus Y squared is 4. So down here, uh, you can just replace this with 4 and make this 4 plus 2X. 
Okay, so maybe if I write it like this, it makes it a little bit easier to see. I just rearranged this bottom equation, and again, just think substitution and let all of this be replaced with 4. Makes it a lot easier uh, to solve. All right, so 2x is negative 4, x is negative 2. Uh, that's looking good. So now let's uh, replace uh, either of these x's. Actually, it, if it's a true solution, it should make both of these true. So uh, let's go with the top one. Uh, negative 2 squared is 4 plus y squared equals 4. y squared is 0, so y is 0. Okay, that checks out. And does it make the other one true as well? So negative 2 squared is 4, plus negative 4 is 0, and y squared equals 0. So y is 0. So my solution, algebraically, agrees with my solution of the point of intersection graphically. Good. All right, let's try this one. Uh, y equals 3x minus 5. That's another easy linear equation. So y-intercept negative 5, slope of 3. Line draw tool. All right, there's that graph. And now let's do this circle. Uh, it's centered at the origin, and it's got a radius of the square root of 5. So let's just go to our calculator and the decimal equivalent of the square root of 5 is 2.2. All right, so here we are at the center and we're going to go just a little bit beyond 2 in four different directions. Make a circle around those points. All right, and uh, we got two points of intersection, it looks like. So um, let's see if we can figure out exactly where those are. So um, uh, again, substitution is going to be your best bet. Um, let's take y, 3x minus 5, and we can replace y down here. Okay, so that looks like this um, x squared plus, and we're gonna, I'll just show it like this. We're gonna replace y with 3x minus 5 and square it. And so we get a lot of practice squaring binomials in this lesson. Square the first one, multiply these two together, and then don't forget to double that. So it starts off as negative 15x but then it becomes negative 30x, and then square the last. Okay, so make it equal to 0. x squared plus 9x plus nine x squared is 10x squared minus 30x plus 20, after we subtract 5. And it uh, looks like we can factor out a GCF of 10 to make this a little bit easier to deal with. Okay, and then it uh, looks like we can factor more. The factors of positive 2 that add up to negative 3. Minus 2, minus 1. And so it looks like we got two x coordinates, x equals 2 and x equals 1. Uh, those both look reasonable because uh, here it uh, looks like it lines up with x equals 1. And this one lines up with x equals 2. So let's find out what those actual y coordinates are. I think it's easier, obviously, to use the top equation. So if we let x be 2, we get y equals 6 minus 5. So y is 1. So it looks like one of our points of intersection is the point 2, 1. That matches up really well with my graph. And now let's uh, let x be 1, and you can probably see that y will be negative 2. All right, and so we're done.
It's always a good feeling when our graph matches the algebraic solution. All right, um, gave you a little tip here. Um, I think it's easier um, in this case, we always want to solve for the lower degree variable. Uh, this is going to be a parabola, actually. Um, I think what I'm going to do here instead of this, we're just going to solve this for x. I think that's going to be a little more straightforward. All right, we can go ahead and do our circle first. So this is centered at the origin, radius of 2. And so here's our circle. You'll know circles, uh, both x and y, are squared. Parabolas, only one of them will be squared. <clears throat> and uh, we need to solve for the one that's not squared, basically. So we're going to be solving for x. All right, so I just subtracted uh, y squared from both sides. Now I'm going to multiply or divide by negative 1. So this is going to be a parabola that opens to the right. Okay, so if, uh, if you want, you can uh, do some inputs, outputs. For example, um, you just have to be careful because um, you're actually inputting for y. So let's just say if y is 0, it's a little bit backwards from what we're used to doing. If we do y is 0, then we get an, a result of negative 4. So negative 4, 0 is on this graph. All right, uh, let's just try, uh, we'll work our way. Looks like it's going to open up going this direction. So let's just get a couple more points. Um, like maybe, I don't know, we can do 1 for y. If y is 1, then that makes x is negative 3. So negative 3, 1. is on this graph, and that means we have symmetry with the x-axis. That means this point's also on the graph. And let's just do one more for, just for confidence sake. Let's just say 2. If y is 2, y is my input. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So 0, 2, and therefore 0, negative 2. So here's my parabola that goes above and below the circle. All right, well, let's see um, where if we have points of intersection. So once again, um, we're going to be using substitution. Well, let's think about this. If y squared minus x is equal to 4, that means that I can come up here and replace 4 with y squared minus x. So just another way of doing substitution, since these are the same. So my substitution now is going to look like this. x squared plus y squared is equal to y squared minus x. So this replaced 4 up here. And that's handy because the y squares will cancel. And uh, I'll just make this equal to 0 by adding x to both sides. And I can factor out x. And I got two solutions for x. x is 0 and x is negative 1. So let's see, if I let x be 0 in the top equation, I get y squared equals 4, so y is 2. And that's also going to be true for the bottom equation. So 0, 2 should be a point of intersection, and that, that looks good. If I let x be negative 1, so uh, x negative 1 makes uh, 1, just go ahead and plug this in, plus y squared equals 4, y squared equals 3, so that's the square root of 3. And that's about 1.7. So let's see, at negative 1, 
I should be hitting my graph at about 1.7 according to this. And since I'm doing the square root of both sides, it's actually going to be plus minus. And uh, my my blue graph is probably off just a little bit, but that looks uh, reasonable if, if I had drawn my circle um, perfectly. I should have uh, two points of intersection here when when x is negative 1. Okay, I get, uh, let me just write out my, all my answers. So 0, 2, and uh, 0, negative 2, actually, because of the same reason. Let me go back to this. When I did the square to both sides, I should have done plus minus. I forgot that. So, But the graph, that's another way. The good thing about the graph, it reminds us of things like that. So 0, 2, 0, negative 2, and then negative 1, 1 1.7, and negative 1, negative 1.7. So we actually have four different answers, uh, four different intercepts, points of intersection. All right, we are almost done. I think we just have uh, two more, and then I'll let you... Uh, practice some tomorrow. Um, this represents uh, what we call the reciprocal function, and um, you just want to solve this for y by dividing by x on both sides. So when you divide by x on both sides, it turns it into this. And these are kind of interesting. Um, they're in two different parts. You cannot use 0, obviously, as an input. So let's just think about some other inputs, like 1. If x is 1, then y is 4. If x is 2, y is 2. And if x is 4, y is 1. And the reason why the, the graph is always in two parts is if we choose positive inputs, then we also have to choose their negative cousins. So if x is negative 1, y is negative 4. Negative 2, negative 2. And negative 4, negative 1. And since x can never be used as an input and y will never be an output, that means that we're going to have horizontal and vertical asymptotes, which will be the x and the y axis. So I will never, ever cross over the x or the y-axis with these graphs. I'll approach them, but never touch them. So there's my top graph. And then here's another circle uh, centered at the origin. And then the square root of 8 is the radius. And that is uh, 2.8 almost three. All right, let me see if I can sketch out a nice circle. Not really. Okay, well, let's see how accurate my graph is because now we're going to do substitution and uh, we're going to see if we have any points of intersection. All right, so I'm just going to, whoops, I'm going to replace y in the bottom. Since I already have this solved for y on the top, I'm going to replace y with 4 over x, then square it. So when I square that, it becomes 16 over x squared. And let's uh, clear out this denominator just by multiplying by x squared on both sides. So that makes x to the fourth. All right. And now we will uh, set this up to be able to factor.
and it factors. It's uh, going to be two different quadratic factors. And the factors of positive 16 that add up to negative 8 be negative 4. So when we set these equal to 0, obviously it's going to be the same result. So x is going to be plus minus 2. Okay. So at positive 2 and at x negative 2, notice my blue circle really wasn't drawn very good. So it's pretty obvious I'm crossing here. And if it was a perfect circle, I should cross here as well. So uh, let's find out what our y coordinates are. So if we just come up here to this and put in positive 2, we get positive 2, obviously. So 2, 2. That checks out. And at 2, or negative 2, 2, if we let x be negative 2, y is positive 2. So yeah, that circle is not real good. OK. Not too bad, is it? All right, let's try this one. And uh, this will be it. So we have another circle, radius 2. All right, and we have a parabola. So this is a parabola that opens up, and it starts down here on the y-axis. It's actually like the parent shifted down nine places. So let's go down here to negative 9. And then you can do some inputs here. we got symmetry around the y-axis. So 1, negative 8, and 2, negative 5. So here's my parabola. So I wonder if I drew it correctly. So let's see if um, let's see if we can um, use substitution here and find out of any, if we have any points of intersection. So we're going to replace the y in this top equation with x squared minus 9. And when we square this out, we get x squared plus x to the fourth minus 18x squared plus 81. And rearranging our terms, uh, we got x to the fourth minus 17x squared plus 77 equals 0. Uh, this is a quadratic, so uh, I know it's raised to the fourth, but uh, that still qualifies for using the quadratic formula. So opposite of b plus minus square root of b squared. So 17 squared. is 289 minus 4 times 1 times 77. 4 times 77 is 308. Oh, OK, we talked about this earlier. If you ever use the quadratic formula and you end up with an imaginary number as part of your answer, then that's a clue that this is not going to have a solution. You can't have an imaginary number solution. Uh, our solutions have to be real numbers. So what that tells me is my graph is actually pretty accurate. If I have no solution, then I do not have any points where these two different graphs intersect. All right, and so that's it. And so I'll let you um, Hopefully take these notes and uh, these will help you with the even problems. They match up pretty closely uh, with all of these examples that we've done. You don't have to do any of those problems today, but uh, when you do work on these tomorrow, hopefully these notes will help. But if not, if you have any questions, let me know.